Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mass Appeal with Kansas City T-Bones manager John Massarelli. Mass Appeal is a weekly program that gives you, the fans, the opportunity to ask the Kansas City manager questions about the T-Bones, baseball or sports in general, or just seek John's wisdom about life events. In this week's episode, John talks to us about his evaluation of the team a third of the way through the season. He shares with us some baseball insights and drills, and John shares what he really thinks about Rob. So let's get right to Mass Appeal. Well, let's welcome back Kansas City T-Bone manager John Massarelli. John, let's first of all begin with your team updates for us. Well, we've had a kind of rough week on the injury front. Uh, Ole and I had to go home uh, behind the plate. It, it torn hip. Um, Sean Fernie went on the disabled list with some shoulder discomfort. Uh, and Anthony Gallus has been banged up, uh, has been playing a couple days and may not be in the lineup a couple more days. I think he's going to get a... Uh, maybe an injection in his shoulder to ease some stress he's having there and it's been his labor and injury. So we've been kind of banged up and finding some guys trying to patch it all together. Is this just something you expect from playing 100 games in a season? Well, uh, you expect it. You just don't expect it to happen all in one week. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. But you, but you just adjust and roll on. Well, if there's any manager who knows how to roll on with the best of them, that's John Massarelli. Well, well uh, John, before we get into fan questions this week, I know you want to have a little gloating about your team winning the championship, so let's talk a little bit about your Cleveland Cavaliers. I told you all I could <laughs> believe. Nobody would believe. That's my, my first championship. I'm 50 years old, so that's my first one as a Cleveland fan. So it's exciting. I was fortunately away from town, but it was fun to see all the pictures. Uh, is, are you seeing a, a a repeat championship for next year? Or is it too too early to be talking about that right now? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, how about the tribe? Eh? The, the way they're playing right now, I think they've caught the fever from the fans. They've won what eight in a row now. Yes, uh, the best league in the best of, uh, best record in the American League, I believe, as a matter of fact, too. So huh. I haven't looked at the standings, but that's impressive. They got good pitch. Absolutely. Terry Francona, a good manager out there, too, so that was a good pick. Yes, he is. Well, let us head into our fan questions this week. We'll first of all begin with Manny from Kansas City, who says, You said on a prior show that you evaluate your teams in thirds of the season. You are about a third of the way through this season, so what is your assessment at this point? Well, uh, yeah, we're entering that middle third, what I call the grind of the season. That, that first third, I guess, you know, obviously not anywhere where we want to be or where we feel we should be, um, which is okay. You can't, you can't, uh, you know, win a championship in the first third of the season. You can, you can only lose one in the first third or the middle third. So we're at the point now where uh, this middle third, because we didn't play well in that first third, this middle third is critical for us to get it, get healthy, and to start playing some consistent baseball. And it, and I think actually we've seen it in the last week. We, we played a little, we had a good series against Joplin, played a little more consistent defensively, and I think our offensively we're, we're starting to climb the ladder a little bit with our players. Uh, so hopefully we're going to get it going on the mound and get all cylinders rolling here in the next couple of weeks. When you're assessing your team at, in thirds of the season, is it solely by record or is there certain kind of factors you're looking to, to try to measure by? No, it's more a, an evaluation of, where the puzzles all fit, you know. That's why I look at kind of pieces of puzzles you're putting your team together, and uh, you, know, you don't see them on the field. But when you in the winter when you're signing them, but when you when you get them on the field and you, you got to assess them, it's tough to do it one day, two days. But after 30 days, you hope hopefully the the puzzle all fits and you get it where you want. And, uh, and we're signing a new pitcher tomorrow that we think is really going to improve us. So uh, hopefully we get. Going on the mound, uh, Jordan Cooper tonight is turned into our ace right now, so I'm hoping uh, we're heading in the right direction. Next up is Dave from Kansas City, who says, it seems this season that there is so much parity in the American Association. What do you think is making it that way? Oh, I don't think it's just, I think it's been every year I've been in it. Uh, there's been parity. Uh, it's a competitive league, uh, which makes it very exciting. It's uh, you know, not dissimilar to the big leagues. It's a very competitive if you don't do one faster than your game right or you're not healthy with the right guys in the lineup, uh, you're not going to win. Uh, and that's true in the big leagues, and I think it's true with the American Association. Uh, you know, 
St. Paul is the only team that's been really consistent uh, offensively and on the mound at the same time. Uh, and I'd be surprised, to be honest, if that continued all year for them. It's just a very competitive league, and you got to have your A game every night if you're going to win. Ian from Olath would like to know, do you see your team getting on the same kind of run you had last season where you guys won so many series in a row? Yes, Ian, I see it starting tonight. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that would be awesome. Leonard from Overland Park asks, I am curious what you think it takes to get on a really great run where your team wins a lot of games. Is that just kind of luck, or is it more timing? Well, uh, everyone knows the secret is, you know, good pitching, good defense, and timely hitting. Uh, I don't think anybody knows how to turn it on and off, or else, you know, everybody be in first place. <laughs> You know, in terms of timely hitting, you hear a lot of stats that are thrown out in terms of, you know, guys batting average. Is there one kind of hitting stat that you measure as more valuable in terms of how well your team is doing? Um, I look at two two columns for a guy offensively. It tells me what kind of – how he's playing. It's how many runs he's driving in and how many runs he's scoring. Uh, batting average is a man-made um, stat. Uh, it's subjective of whether a guy got a hit or not. You know, a guy could be hitting balls hard and getting scored errors, uh, but he's getting on base and scoring runs, or he's driving in runs with those balls that are ruled errors. Uh, but the only stats that aren't you know man-made, in my opinion, there are how many times you score, how many runs you drive in, and that's really what I look at. We have an interesting question from Peter from Kansas City who would like to know, is it hard to come and shake the hands and be cordial with an umpire the night after he has made a really bad call? You came out and argued and were rejected. Uh, to me, it's part of being professional. It's just professionalism. These, you know, The umpires, they're, they're professionals. They're trying to do a job every night. Uh, and sometimes, you know, there's certain calls where I have to get thrown out. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Just to protect your team or protect protect one of your players, uh, you know, I'll go out there. You know, Ninety percent of the time, when I go out, I know I'm getting ejected before I leave the dugout. Uh, I just say the right things to make sure I get ejected. <laughs> it's more just to send a message to my team and to the umpires that uh, you know I felt the call wasn't right. But the next night, to me, it's a it's kind of like a school teacher. Everybody gets a clean slate on the next day. That's interesting. You don't, hold the ba- you don't hold the bad kids accountable the next day. You give them a clean slate. I like that. Peter from Kansas. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Fan of the Cubs would like to know. The Cubs got swept by the Cardinals at home this week, and everyone seems to think that is a big deal. Are they just overreacting? It's, I, always, I always laugh at fans. I mean, I get it back home in Cleveland when, you know, the tribe will get swept in April and everyone acts like it's the uh, the biggest deal, or even in June, or don't plan well. I mean, this is a marathon, and you're going to get swept. You're going to sweep. I mean, it's just all part of playing a long, long season. Uh, and they get swept in October is when you should be concerned. <laughs> they will be there in October. Their pitching is too strong. I don't think there's ever been a team that didn't have at least a three-game losing streak ever, so, so not that big a deal. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, we have Mike. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. interesting to track on the – who holds the record? The Yankees still on wins, like 130 or – what was that, 98? I, I think the Seattle Mariners in 98 won 116, I think was the most wins in a season, if I remember correctly. Okay. I'd, love, I'd love to go back and look, see how many – what their longest losing streak was. I'm going to check that out. We'll talk about that in next week's show for sure. Uh, right. ne- next up, we have Michael from Chicago who'd like to know, of all these big starters that everyone is talking about, Arietta, Kershaw, Bumgarner, Scherzer, as examples, who do you think is the best? Oh, that is such a tough question. I mean, they're all front-line front starters. I mean, there you just named maybe the five best pitchers in baseball. Uh, so I don't think... Uh, I mean, Bumgarner is the one that's really proven it the most because he's got two World Series titles. Uh, well, I don't know. I'd take any one of those guys and be able to send them in in that nine spot and feel pretty smart as a manager. <laughs> That'd be a nice rotation right there for you, too. <laughs> so. Yeah. yeah. That'd win 116 games. <laughs> yeah, I would say. 
Sam from Kansas City would like to know, the Royals don't seem to be playing with the same fire this season. Is this anything to be worried about? Again, why, fans for a second, I guarantee you, the 25 guys in that Royal clubhouse are playing as hard as they can every night. They're professionals. And, that's, and again, it's just a very competitive league and competitive business. And, you know, the Indians are just playing better right now. That's all the bottom line is. I mean, KC in second, I haven't even looked at the standings. Yeah, in their division they are, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, Cleveland is just playing well. I know that. Next up, we have Kim writing to us from Seoul, South Korea. He says, do you think baseball is more of a mental game that, than in other sports because you have so much time to think during the game? I think like golf, it is the most mental sport because of that fact that there's so many decisions you're making. Anytime, you, whether you're on the mound or you're at the plate and you're making decisions during stressful situations, which obviously if you're standing in front of you know, 12,000 people and the game's on the line. That's a stressful situation. <laughs> uh, anytime you're making those decisions, the game becomes mental. Uh, compared to at 5 o'clock when you're hitting batting practice and there's no crowd and there's no, our athleticism comes out and we do what's natural. Uh, but when we get into a situation like that, we don't do what's natural because of what goes between our ears. Uh, now all of a sudden we're, our body's not fluid. If, if that makes sense, uh, quiet mind and fluid body is what uh, I heard a doctor would say once. Mental doctor. Hmm, interesting. Uh, great that we're getting a, a, a person writing in from Seoul, South Korea. I thought too. I, I, very impressive. So that's awesome. Hank from Emporia would like to know next. How can I improve my footwork behind the plate so I can b block pitches better and get up quicker to throw quicker to second? Well, Hank, you just work on it. You have somebody throw balls in the dirt, you block them, put feet, and get up and throw it. Practice it every day. That's how you get better at it. It's the only way to get better at it. Is there like a, you know, sometimes you hear people will talk about that there's too much practicing going. Is there such a thing in, in this kind of work with your footwork? Not if you're a catcher or a shortstop or any skill position. I mean, the people don't, I mean, Baseball is a skill sport, uh, like shoot, shooting the basketball. If you don't practice your skill, you're not going to be good at it. Uh, if you want to be the best at it, then you better practice it more than anybody else. Barry from Kansas City would like to know, how come a guy can look totally foolish on one pitch, not even close to it, then drill a 420-foot home run on the next <laughs> one? I don't get that. <laughs> well, if... Uh, there is, you've ever faced a 95 mile an hour fastball, that would answer that question real quick, or a, a slider off that. So, we're, we're, if a guy throws an 89 mile an hour breaking slider uh, and then comes back and makes a mistake with it, with how how you hit a 420 feet after you just looked bad. It's just uh, one guy, and you make a great pitch on one pitch, it can make, make you look bad, and then you make the same exact pitch, and you don't make it, a mistake, and you drill it. So, it's what makes this game great. Next up comes Jamie from Bethany, who has a good question for the skipper. She says, my child is three, and my husband wants him to start playing baseball, at least practicing. Is there an age where you think it's too young to be playing? Well, Jamie, I say baseball is a game. And when is it too young to play a game? You should be able to play a game all the time. Uh, I played in the backyard by myself all the time with baseball. Hitting it up. Knocking up and hitting it or pitching it and turning against the wall. Uh, I think sometimes, especially at the younger ages, parents put too much pressure on the kids. That, like they got to win or they're just not, they don't let them go out and play. Uh, well, I don't think there is too young. I just wouldn't force a three-year-old to play it if he didn't want to. If he wants to play, let him play. That's good advice. Lee from Springfield would like to know, how do you view the whole discussion on concussions? Do you think that this is as serious as it is made out to be? He's just worried, or is, I, I'm assuming Lee is a guy, says, I'm just worried about my son playing sports. i tell you what, I had a different opinion of that. I thought it might have been a little overrated until I watched the movie uh, Concussions. I mean, that didn't scare you enough. Uh, 
I didn't have a son. I had a daughter who wasn't involved in sports. But uh, if I was a dad with a son, young son right now, I'd worry about football, to say the least. I don't know uh, basketball or uh, baseball, some of these other non-contact sports that really, I mean, you get a concussion in a car accident. <laughs> so, but football is another animal, especially when you watch that movie. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Mike from Lawrence asks, he says he loves movies about baseball and wants to know what your favorite baseball movie is. Oh, that's a tough question because they're all, you know, I, I like the modern ones, you know, they, they, instead of the ones from the 60s and 50s, modern. Any Kevin Cosner baseball movie has been great. Uh, he does a great job, and I think he's done three of them, and they've all been great. Uh, a League of Their Own was awesome. I think they're all great. <laughs> But that has to be my favorite. The three Kevin Cosners and the League of Their Own. Probably my favorite four. Tim from Kansas City would like to know from you, who was your role model in sports growing up? My role model was the Wichita manager's father. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Nice. I mean, he was, I was, just, I grew up, and I'm, I'm probably a little older than uh, Pete Jr., but uh, so I grew up in Ohio, the big red machine. And I kind of either read some read Pete Rose books when I was young, watched them on TV, and I can remember in Little League doing the old because he became thing, you know, where I'd take a walk and I would sprint the first base like he did, uh, or I would always slide head first like he did with a belly flop. Uh, he was just one of those guys that I loved how, watching him play and how he played, how hard he played, and I kind of tried to model that. Uh, so I've always had respect for him as a player. Uh, Pete Jr. was telling me that they're going to retire Pete Sr.'s uniform in Cincinnati tomorrow. So that's pretty exciting. Wow, I didn't know they hadn't already. Well, I guess it makes sense that they hadn't but with all this happened. But that's great that they're uh, doing that now. I actually was shocked they hadn't until he told me that too. But uh, good that's finally happening. So. Right. Our next comes from Jack from Cleveland, who says, you're a positive guy, Mass. What do you see happening to Johnny Manziel? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm glad he's not my son. <laughs> Poor kid needs, I don't know. I, all I know is what you read and see in the media, so I don't know the kid personally, obviously. I mean, it's, what a sad story. It's just a sad story. Uh, and you hope to see the kid clean his life up and get some help whatever. So, that's my positive spin. <laughs> Alonso from Cleveland asked, after I'm that... Glad he's not the, I'm glad he's not the Cleveland quarterback anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I bet that. I bet that's true. Alonzo from Cleveland asked, after that epic comeback, where do you rate LeBron in terms of all-time NBA greats? Uh, I am not a great basketball historian. So I don't think LeBron's approaching. I think who was the, the one all the the titles, uh, Bill, Bill Russell. Oh, Bill Russell, yeah, I think he won 10. Yeah. It has the most in the 60s. I mean, I'm not familiar with the 80s, the Jordan, the, the uh, Larry Bird, and the Magic Johnson. And I would have to, as an athlete, classify LeBron as a bigger, faster, stronger version of Michael uh, Magic Johnson. That's why I describe I mean, LeBron plays center, he can play guard. I mean, and he's as bigger, stronger, and faster than anyone on the court. I think that's a good it's assessment. Amazing. It was really when I went and saw him live for the first time a couple of years ago, as a guy that, you know, evaluates athletes, you just watch him on the court and see how he's bigger, stronger, and faster than anybody on the court. <laughs> I don't know if that, they've ever had someone like that in that sport. Jeremy from Topeka would like to know from you, who do you, how do you keep yourself entertained on those long bus trips? Well, now that school's out, my wife travels with us on the bus. So oh, nice. i got to sit with her. <laughs> she helps keep me entertained. Okay. Uh, we, we, we're lucky. we got a nice bus there with uh, Kincaid, uh, one of our uh, sponsors. We get a, a satellite dish uh, that has HBO, has... We get ESPN, anything we can watch on TV, on the satellite. So it's pretty convenient that way. Keep us entertained. <laughs> so maybe we should be asking her how she keeps herself entertained on the bus trip. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Tonight she's fighting the urge of the remote because we got to watch uh, Sports Center instead of Home and Garden. <laughs> Our last question comes from Luke from Wichita, who rears his ugly head again and says, Skipper, you were a class act for sure, uh, but why are you doing this show with that Rob? Isn't he kind of goofy? <laughs> well, I guess my answer, Rob, is, is aren't all aren't all journalists goofy? Yes, we are. That's why anybody that would be a journalist is goofy. So for a living, no offense, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. We have to be this way to go around writing about everybody else. There's got to be something going on there. So, <laughs> well, thanks for joining us this week, John. All righty, Rob. Thanks for having me. I'll see you next week. We want to thank Manager John Massarelli for joining us on Mass Appeal this week. If you have your own questions you'd like to ask the Kansas City Skipper, please send them to us at askjohn at minorleaguesportsreport.com. That's askjohn at minorleaguesportsreport.com. Please have your questions to us by Thursday evening so we can give the Skipper a little time to review them before we record the show. I'm Rob Panier, the Managing Editor of the Minor League Sports Report. I want to thank you for joining us this week, and we'll look for you next time on Mass Appeal.